<laughs> you tried to set this up, and I tried it one night out of seven. You tried to set this up on like a, any type of public area, and you go out and circle them. Never <laughs> <laughs> Pass around the hat. Yeah, they're going to be staring at you for the duration. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't really concentrate very well on what you're trying to get. You know, like you're trying to remember the frequency of what the X is on them. Not when you got 20 people looking at you. You know, I don't know what's creepier to have the squatters, you know, right next to the 500 foot drop off, or, you know, a circle of Chinese that are. Huh? <laughs> Perhaps I might depend on the demeanor of the squatters. <laughs> We're talking about so the squatters are a rock work clip phenomenon that you won't find. You won't find them at Grayland, by the way. But anyway, okay. Uh, that is the second level of ferrite gain. The supercharged portables. Very, very useful for a lot of purposes. Mm -hmm. Not for everything, but they fill a very big uh, gap between the stock portable and something uh, more effective. Okay. Next level of ferrite gain. Airport friendly. <laughs> FSL antenna. I brought two of them. This is about as airport friendly as you can get. Well, you can hold it like this. <laughs> it, it's a little different than that model, right? Uh, Tested. They don't look subversive, usually, to most inspectors. <laughs> they, get, they get through TSA. Not yet. <laughs> we haven't had a single one rejected, and I think we've had uh, how many attempts between all of us? At least 25 or 30. Probably. Yeah. Not well, a single rejection yet. You're all on a TSA. Yeah. Yeah. What this means is, what this means is this thing here. When you get the hang of it and know how to tune it and all of the tricks, it will give you gain equivalent to a four-foot box loop. Now it takes a while until you get, uh, Craig can tell you, it takes a while, takes a while before you learn all the little tricks about how to optimize it. But once you do, can you imagine carrying a four foot box loop anywhere you want on a plane to any corner of the world? That's the power we have. <laughs> One of the tactics I wound up using, especially Rockworks and, and some in Hawaii, is a tendency to inhibit my desire to jump around on the frequencies instead of walk up and walk down because it makes the tuning process more efficient. Yeah. So if you go like nine kilohertz at a time, you can go boom, 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 and then all you have to do is maybe to touch a the little move to touch it. Well, and are, are you you're going to address that either now or when you show off things this afternoon, Gary? You know the fact. Okay, good. Okay. good. <laughs> Because that, that, oh. that is the killer, because people, some people will say, oh, I don't Oh, understand. you can all that become absolute work. experts in tuning these. If, if uh, we don't have rain this afternoon, we'll, I will be happy to teach you all the little tricks. Um, these are my primary target of experimentation. Now, any component I can find. Uh, Craig came up to me a year ago at Rockwork, and he said, Gary, my, my thing is not tuning down to 531. And if that had not have happened, we would have missed out on the greatest bonanza of improvement because we discovered a variable capacitor replacement unit that it's, it's like you turn, tune the station in and it's like thunder and lightning going off when you get the thing to you. And it's just, just like an explosion of a signal. And we didn't know this until you know, and of course, after I discovered it, I gave Greg one of the, you know, the new models. <laughs> and the guy in Australia has one of these new models. I've got a few, you know, so anyway, let's get back to the subject. Uh, the third level of gain, frequent flyer FSL. This is, roughly speaking, just like a four-foot box loop that you can almost put in your pocket. And we didn't know how good these were until we actually went out to these foreign beaches, you know, like, like Hawaii, uh, Cook Islands. Um, 
I tried it in Hong Kong for one night. You know, I had the circle around me. Yeah. And it worked great, but you can't do that without going nuts to have 20 people staring you down. Okay. Fourth, <laughs> fourth level of ferrite gain. Airport unfriendly. <laughs> This is about as airport unfriendly as you can get. This is the largest in the world, to my knowledge. It's also heavy. It is. Yeah. It's about 40 pounds. Uh, I can't tell you the cost because my wife's in the room. <laughs> she has no idea. <laughs> All I can say is uh, it's on the high side of 1K. Um, so, very heavy. Uh, very costly. Very suspicious. Yeah, very subversive. Very uh, effective. But I tell you what, when you get on an ocean cliff and you don't have much space and you need an antenna that's going to give you the, the biggest bang for the, for the size, that's very tough to beat, especially on the low frequencies. Um, on the Rockport Cliff, uh, Tom and I have developed kind of a cooperation system. And Tom and I know pretty well how each other's antennas are going to do on different frequencies. He's got a broadband loop with a Perseus SDR, and I, I typically deploy um, three of these. Okay. Um, on the extreme low band, 531, uh, we have a cooperation system on like 558, 531. I will, I will tell him if I hear anything on there and kind of alert him. Now, I cannot get what he gets on the high band. I, I just can't. What a fantastic system. The FSLs are kind of the king of the hill on the low, extreme low frequencies. And I guess about 1,000 kc. And then the uh, Perseus SDR and small broadband loop on the cliff, those are the king of the hill. But the way that works out, it's complementary. So one of us hears something, we can notify the other, and we have, you know, as far as I'm concerned, an awesome cooperation system. Uh, when 6DL was coming in, that's Western Australia, 10 kilowatts, when it was coming in on 531, <coughs> I told uh, Tom, hey Tom, I think we've got Western Australia 531. And uh, he, he checked it and said, you know, he, he could get a parallel that I couldn't get. He can check parallel frequencies, the networks. New Zealand is a network country. It's got radio sport, it's, it's got uh, RNZ. Everybody knows this that, that knows New Zealand. So, all of these, Tom can check networks and he can verify something on there that I can't do. But on the extreme low band, I can get signals that he might not get as well as I can. But kind of complimentary. But airport unfriendly. These things have drawbacks, okay? <laughs> Unless your budget is very, very generous for the hobby. You don't even want to think about building one of these. And to be perfectly honest with you, they're not all that practical unless you're going to go to an ocean cliff the expedition. Then they're practical. You don't really need this much gain if you're just out to have fun. If you're out to have fun, like on a, a trip, use one of these or, or use like one of these. Okay. Okay, I've I've skimmed over the four levels of ferrite gain. Any questions on four levels of ferrite gain? Uh, Gary? Yeah. Is that your article that you sent me? Yeah. It'll be in the DX monitor in your next issue. Well, thank you very much. Highly honored. So you can uh, read until you do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this yeah. article uh, was made to be yeah, I, somewhat. Sorry, Gary, there was one other question. Sure. About the big guys. Uh, in comparison with the small guys. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, one thing I've really noticed is that you really do well at the bottom of the band, uh, yeah. especially with the big one. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I feel like when you're, do, do, do you sort of, for example, do you do better at the higher band than the 
the big loop does when you're using the small small FSLs? No? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, <coughs> as I mentioned, to and, and since I have one radio and one loop, mm -hmm. I tend to step up. Correct. Yeah. Instead yeah, of bounce yeah. around sure. because yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. more efficient for mm -hmm. that magical hour that you get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I understand. Um, this last the expedition, you know, Tom graciously pointed out, and I tend to focus, I mean, even in Colorado, mm -hmm. most of my stuff, even with flags and casas, is on the lower end. Exactly, of yes. Yeah. Every now and then, the upper band will wake up, mm -hmm. and I have to remind myself, you know, don't yeah, forget about that. There, yeah. Yeah. Tom did a great job of saying, oh, by the way, I've got this on 1296, and this on mm -hmm. 1566, and you might want to check the upper band, and I was like, Yes, I like it. <laughs> sure yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had focused on the lower end. Right. And I did uh, wind up with a few receptions. In the Correct. Area. Yeah. I'm just wondering at the time, you know, because I haven't really followed in group detail, did you do a, say, a checkup on, say, something like 1306? I think I saw a log in 1503. You know, I suspect it's from the. Uh, 1503, it, that's a regular anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I made a good recording of 1503 that you Yeah, yeah. But to be right. honest, to be totally honest, I was extremely distracted this last uh, mm -hmm. expedition. Because you were life. doing a lot of long way. Yeah. Long way. Yeah, it was, yeah, the, yeah. It was yeah. phenomenal. Okay. I've never heard anything like well, it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll follow so, up, I'll follow up yeah, on this because see, you're doing live, really well. A live the exer can only do one at a time. I know, and, I know. And, and when, when long awesome. wave is phenomenal. Yeah. You, you just, it's a live the exer. You just got to, you, yeah, you got to. Push your yeah, luck yeah. for all the You've got to bring along an analyst to answer somebody else's <laughs> my question. Now, some, some lucky people can record both long wave and medium wave yeah, at the yeah. same time, but okay. I can't do that. All right. <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> uh, okay, so monster FSLs uh, look like a ring of dynamite. Don't take it to an airport. Uh, <laughs> you'll get more travel excitement than you can handle. Uh, now there's another, in between this and this, there is another group of medium size that are very practical, but you still don't want to take them to an airport. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want to happen is for them to reject your antenna when you're trying to go overseas. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? You know, don't push your luck. If I may, another thing that speaks to the, you know, innovation and practical side of that design <coughs> is, I used bubble wrap in one of the plastic containers right in my carry. Mm. That's a decent enough size that I can pack it and pad it enough uh -huh. that I'm not that concerned about it arriving at the destination in serviceable and good oh, condition. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know, because airlines are reducing. I just noticed on Alaska they just cut down by an inch the size that you can take on carry on. So this, this little, it's all about space good. and weight. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let me move on here. Uh, the article, four levels of ferrite gain, four enhanced locations to try them out. Uh, the first enhanced location is one that most of the actors don't even think of. It's fertile farm soil. Rich farm soil has some DXing advantages to it. I discovered this myself in the Puyallup Valley. I get different mm. countries optimized than Bruce does. Uh, I think Bruce one time on 729, he had uh, uh, J-O-C-K in Japan. Now I only live about 30 miles south. I had China on 729. Wow. I didn't have anything of J-O-C-K. It, like, it was like an either or. And this, this happens routinely. I don't know why, nobody knows that. There's an ultralight uh, radio enthusiast in Oklahoma, uh, Richard Allen. Uh -huh. He lives on very fertile soil. He's heard, with ultralight radios and a medium size, size FSL, he's heard Australians routinely, uh, 774. Uh, let's see, another one he had was, uh, he's got 3LO, he's got, um, I think he's, I think he's got 594, the 3, 3, 3WB. Anyway, he, could, he routinely gets these things around September. And uh, he's gotten 
European long wave broadcast on a hot rotted uh, long wave loop scale. Plug into his PL360, which is like a uh, right? it's, it's the smallest ultra light there is. Anyway, he does it because of his fertile farm soil. If you're in the, in the middle of the country and an ocean beach is not an option, try it out. You've got nothing to lose. Just to be sure, could it be used for FMDXing or just medium wave? FMDXing usually depends on how high you are in your location. Uh, you know, once you get up to a very high spot, then you've got line of sight. And I don't know if, if that fertile farm soil is going to really help you out because because where we've noticed that it matters is very long range transoceanic DMs for these guys in the middle of the country. Okay, well, I'm just talking in general, like anywhere in the country, in the USA. Um, I've never gotten much into FMDX. We do have some guys here that are experts at it, though. Okay. Uh, you know, Patrick, I don't, I don't see Patrick. I don't see Patrick. He just slept in. Patrick Martin is. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just sir, sir, I'm just using Aggie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And also, Curtis, uh, you, you talk about FMDX. So you yeah. Know. As that far as it. I know, the higher you are, the, the better you're going to feel. Yeah. That's the higher you are, and also, the more elements you have on your Yagi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But um, you get Tropo also. Tropo can help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tropo. Yeah. 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 Whether or not the soil, the soil is having any effect. We had, we had somebody over here. Was Sir, did you have something to say? I had a question about, uh, yeah. did you buy these uh, FSL, the smaller version already built? or? Uh, I'm doing everything I can to mass produce them. Okay. Uh, budget, you know, within reasonable, you know. Is the right. answer maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, to be honest, I've given out about 15. Boy, I mean, <laughs> I've given out about 15. Christmas is coming. The past couple of years. Anyway, yeah, uh, they, so, so possibly they are available. You just have to maybe yeah. get, talk What's to the, Gary. Okay. <laughs> What's the time of uh, construction? How long do you think the build will be? Uh, this, the this is the latest uh, three inch baby FSL. The most lightweight, smallest, cheapest. Uh, I would say all of these together is going to run about 100 bucks. Now, yeah, but how long does it time. take? Yeah. Oh, the the time? Yeah. Yeah. I think once you get the hang of it, you can. You can do one in a couple of days. One, one advantage, I, I don't know if you know, is that Gary is very good at putting together Heathkit style instructions. Right. So um, <coughs> if, you, if you're interested in building one of these, you have the tools for it. You know, like it's, it's not like, hey, here's something, just build it like this, you know, which is the normal way that hobby stuff works. And uh, yeah, Gary I will give you, you know, like, you first you do this, then you take the screwdriver, then you apply that, you know. And, and, I, I you built know. many Heathkit. Yeah, no, 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 no. So, but the thing is, that, that, that he the, makes it simple. He makes it easy. Yeah. It yeah. is like a dream to have yeah. uh, a heat kit that you know it looks so complicated. All you have to do is follow the instructions, yeah. and it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what you've and got. And then the company yeah. went down the tubes in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody uh, yeah. wanted to that. build anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a company that's trying to bring some of the heat kits up. I know. Yeah. 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 Hey, Eric. Okay. What yeah. question I do have to ask is. Will these work on uh, not just an ultralight, but a bigger radio? Oh, absolutely. Size any size, of, any portable with a loop stick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can put your Panasonic RF twenty two hundred, and it, this this thing will boost up the RF twenty two hundred by a pretty big degree, even though it's like one fifth of the size. Yeah. Okay, another question, like in the Midwest, like where the lane is flat or rolling, uh -huh. like how good would it pick up signals from other countries or in the U.S. in general? Well, this depends on, first of all, how close you are to a coast and the type of soil you have. Um, and propagation. Some DXers, I tell you what, some DXers inland, uh, one of them is Nigel in Alberta, yeah. have phenomenal results. Right. Phen even compared to what we do on the on the west coast, he he tracks down stuff from Western Australia and Central Alberta. I, I don't know what his secret. He, of course, he's got 
monster of races. Yes. Nick yes. and I have Brilliant. discussed, I've always thought he's on the, shall we say, the sunny side of the donut. <laughs> <laughs> but he's phenomenal. Yeah, right? yeah. I, 